Oh, yes. Hello? Hello? Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. It's official. It's official. Deion Sanders. Prime time is going to be Nebraska's next head coach. Okay. It's, I'm, I'll let everybody. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a text. I'm getting a text. Hold on. The janitor at Memorial Stadium is texting me. Oh, also, my barber is texting me. It's going to be Urban Myers, the next head coach of the University of Nebraska. Oh, hold on. Hold on. There's some tweets, some stuff on the internet. You know everything on the internet is true. Oh, nope, nope, nope. It's going to be Matt Rule. He's going to be the next head coach. Oh, I'm getting another call. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I got it. Frank Stolich will be the head coach. Bill Callahan is going to run the offense. Bo Pelini is going to run the defense. That's that's the dream team here at the University of Nebraska. I will let the people... Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Checking the Pulse Rescue Nation. Brought to you by X Cancer. Check them out at xcancer.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you... You could go stir crazy, you could go buku crazy trying to figure out who the next head coach is going to be or could just enjoy this crazy freaking process. Five years ago, it was all about one guy. This year, now, it's about five billion. I looked it up. Anyways, I digress. Here's the deal. Sooner or later, something has to be true. All right, sooner or later, we're going to have a head coach. One of the rumors is going to be true. By the way, the whole Solich head coach, Callahan running the offense, Pelini running the defense, I was at the Oklahoma game my sophomore year, okay, Nebraska at Oklahoma, where Pelini yelled at Callahan, you got my job. He may have said a few extra words after that as well. You am a mother trucker. Anyways, so that would never, ever happen. But here's the deal. Sooner or later, something's going to be true. Okay, we're going to have a head coach. And like I said, there's people that I trust. I've said this before. There are commonalities that I've seen, but nothing that I trust enough that I'm going to say anything about because here on this show, this is how we roll, okay? I would rather be a little bit late to the party and put an extra emphasis on being as accurate I can, as I can be rather than trying to be the first one to get something out there, okay, for the sake of getting it out there and possibly being wrong. Now, everybody makes mistakes. Eventually, I'll make a whole bunch more than I already have. But here's my point. Everybody's different. But that's how we're going to roll here on the Character Chronicles. Now, here's an update on the Nebraska coaching search. All right. We're going to talk about Matt Rule. We're going to talk about some of my favorites. We're going to talk about various individuals. I figure we should just start with Mr. Rule himself because he seems to be the man of the week again. Again, I don't know. Does that mean anything? It seems to be Matt Rule week 2.0, but here we go. If you don't know about Coach Rule, uh, he spent 13 years as a position coach. He coached all sorts of different positions. The defensive line, okay, he did that actually at three different schools where he coached the D-line. The offensive line, I love a guy who's coached in the trenches. Not only D-line, but O-line. By God, do we need help in the trenches? Maybe he's the guy to do it. He's coached both sides of the trenches, offensive and defensive lines. He's also coached um, in the NFL. He's coached linebackers, tight ends, and quarterbacks as well. I'm sorry, the offensive line was in the NFL. Okay, linebackers, tight, end, tight ends, and quarterbacks was in a collegiate college of football. And I love when somebody coaches the quarterbacks too, because that means you basically got to be able to run the whole offense, which is probably and teach the whole offense to one player. Not just your job, but everybody's job, which you can imagine is much more difficult than just learning one job, which probably led to him in his three-year stint as an offensive coordinator, which then led into his past 10 years being a head coach. Okay, four years at Temple, three years at Baylor, and three years with the Carolina Panthers. His NFL record, not phenomenally phenomenal. 11 wins, 27 losses. That's a winning percentage of 289. Now, I will say I've never, ever, ever equated NFL success or lack thereof to how you're going to do in college. And people are going to immediately be like, oh, we brought in Callahan after he got fired. How'd that go? Well, first of all, I think people look back on the Callahan years a little bit differently than they used to. But what about Nick Saban? I played with guys in St. Louis at the Rams who played for him in Miami. And I'm just going to say, I don't use this word often, but they hated him. I think he's done pretty well in Alabama. Urban Meyer. I don't know what to say about Jacksonville, but he's one of the best college, most decorated most championships, wins, college football coaches of all time. So the NFL success or lack thereof, I don't know. I've never equated it to much when it comes to college football head coaching. Now, here's one thing I like about Coach Rule because he's equally balanced. He's coached offense. He's coached defense. Obviously spent time as an offensive coordinator. He's much more equipped if he wanted to. He hasn't coached in, the, in college for about three or four years now since so he's been with the Panthers. But he's much more equipped to take that CEO role than Scott Frost ever was. I like a coach that's well-balanced. You don't have to be. Osborne was very one-sided. I'm just saying where you have to worry about NIL and you have to worry about the transfer portal, you're basically running a gigantic business operation organization as a a Power 5 college football coach. You might have to take more of a CEO role than college football coaches ever have. He may be better suited to do that, especially from understanding both sides of the ball. 
Now, he's a bit of a builder, if you will. Program builder is kind of what he's known as at Temple. His four years there, his, he had two wins, six wins, ten wins, and then ten wins. That last ten win season did include a conference title, the second ever AAC conference championship game. He's kind of one of those coaches. You might take one step back with the program before you take two steps forward. Okay. Now, he's never been anywhere where the cover is completely bare. But here's the deal. They may have had more wins at Temple and Baylor than we've had at Nebraska in our recent past four or five years, obviously. Severe struggles, as we all know. But it kind of reminds me of, some, of Nebraska right now. The cupboard is not bare at all, ladies and gentlemen. We have talent. Okay, we have very, very young players. We only have one senior starting on defense. You look at offense, potentially, who knows, transfer portal. Who comes in, who goes out. But in theory, we could have Casey Thompson back, Trey Palmer, Anthony Grant, Okay, we only have a handful of seniors on offense. We could have essentially F Teddy Prohaska, Nadine Nuwili, and three of our five current starting offensive linemen back. So in theory, you could have five guys you could potentially count on to start that have started before. I know they're not, they're not great right now, but hopefully they get better. Maybe Matt Rule can help with that. Maybe not. My point is, he's never really been anywhere where the cupboard is completely bare, and the cupboard is not bare here in Nebraska. There's talent. It needs to be developed, and it needs to be freaking coached. Okay. Now, rule is about toughness, especially mental toughness and mental focus. He does not like simple mental errors at all. Okay. Now, some things to keep in mind. All right. He's never beaten a power five team with more than eight wins. Now, he has beaten two non-power five teams that had nine wins. All right. In three of his seven seasons, he had great records, 10 wins or more. All right, his other four, not so much. Now, you could argue he was kind of building the program up. Okay, one step back, two step forwards is what, how he seems to build up his programs. Now, another thing, he's never stayed anywhere very long, ne never any, any longer than three to four years. Okay, now I will say this, you know, if he gets us rolling and then he goes somewhere else, that could be a little bit frustrating, but it also could be a big reps recipe for success because you come back to Mickey Joseph. Now, I don't want to leave Mickey jo Joseph out of this conversation, Interim Nebraska coach Mickey Joseph hasn't had an interview for Nebraska's permanent head coaching job, he said on Monday. He hasn't talked to NU Athletic Director Trev Alberts about the role. Now, when Mickey was asked if he would be open to serve on the next coach's staff, he said, and I quote, now he said before this, he said, I'd love to stay, but he goes, and I quote, I would sit down and talk with the family, talk to Trev and that head coach and find out what my role would be. I would love to stay. Now, this could potentially... If Rule were to come here and he were to get the program rolling and he, then he goes somewhere else for whatever reason, it could work out well if Mickey Joseph is the coach in training. I'm just saying it could be, and maybe Rule, Rule doesn't come here. Maybe he stays here for 50 years. I don't know. Or maybe he comes for three or four and does what he does and goes somewhere else and then Mickey's ready to go because he's made it clear he wants to stay. Pardon me. My throat's been bugging me all week. Okay. And I might just talk a smidge fast. So if Rule were to come here, build us up, and then he did go somewhere else, you got Mickey Joseph, the next head coach in training, who has said he wants to stay on staff. Now, I want to throw some other names out there, okay? This is not necessarily my top five, but maybe it is. I don't know. I haven't sat down and made a top five, but I'm going to throw some names out there. I've already done the Deion Sanders video. Go back and check that out from last week. Chris Kleiman, okay? I briefly mentioned him in the past. Lance Leipold, the Kansas head coach, Matt Rule, okay? Urban Meyer, I know, I know, I know. That's a show in of it to itself, maybe a whole docu-series. Okay, just a couple others to throw out there. Kind of outliers, because those maybe were my top five, so to speak. I don't know, I'd have to dive more into Urban itself. But Mark Stoops, I just don't know if he'd leave Kentucky after what he's built there for 10 years. And Jamie Chadwell, and I'm going to be honest with you, what he's done at Coastal Carolina. Who the heck was Coastal Carolina three years ago? Okay, his biggest enemy is Scott Frost. People are going to see him as Scott Frost 2.0. Oh, a small school coach who has great success but isn't going to hang in the big time. Well, maybe that's the case. Maybe Scott Frost was an anomaly and he didn't go about things the right way. But I think Scott Frost is his biggest enemy because they're going to be connected in the eyes of Nebraska fans. But his name hasn't been brought up a ton, but he has 31 wins and four losses in his last 35 games. And if you watch their offense, it's the modern day version of what Nebraska's triple option would look like. It would sure look nice here in Lincoln. Now, every guy I just talked about, excuse me again, at one point or another, has been talked about. Even Jamie. I've seen videos on Jamie here and there. Except for one guy. And his name's been mentioned, but I haven't seen a lot on it. Okay? Now, nobody was talking about Deion Sanders, but seriously, 
for Nebraska before I did that video last week. And it's Kansas State head coach Chris Kleiman. Think about this. Four FCS championships in five years at North Dakota State. Now, I'm well aware that former Nebraska coach, my D coordinator, my true freshman year, Craig Bull, built up North Dakota State. But it could have easily fallen off. No, instead, he kept that train rolling four more national titles at the FCS level in five years. Think back to 01 Miami. Larry Coker, he takes over for a, a team that had won, like, what, 34 games in a row? Something like that. They beat us in the Rose Bowl, okay, in 2001. And then Nebraska, or I'm sorry, Miami just fell off after that. Okay, Larry Coker couldn't keep it going. Chris Kleiman kept it rolling. You could argue stronger than ever if you look at some of those teams he coached. Okay. His first year in Kansas State, he had nine wins. They were five and seven the year before. I'm sorry, eight wins. Eight wins. They were five and seven the year before. Well, Adam, you know, eight wins. I mean, eight wins. I mean, my God, I, to I was told it was going to take five to 50 years to get eight, eight wins here by the previous guy who was our head coach. Two of his first three years, K-State has eight wins. Okay. And the one year they didn't have eight wins was the COVID year. They're currently number 19 in the country. And when you think about what Trev Alberts mentioned when, when he talked in the press conference where he announced the firing of Scott Frost, it kind of fits climate. It kind of fits rule to a degree. Okay. But Chris Kleiman's teams are built on toughness, fundam being fundamentally sound and disciplined. He does more with less at Kansas State. And in all honesty, he has recruited some pretty decent talent, recruited some pretty decent talent to Manhattan. You can't tell me. Okay, it's harder to recruit to Nebraska than it is to K-State. No disrespect to those fine folks over there. But here's the other thing. He also turned Adrian Martinez, think whatever you want about him. He was a turnover machine. Okay, and I know he's been banged up this year. Adrian has a little bit. But he turned him from a turnover mach machine into a guy who protects the football. Okay, now the question is, does he want to leave K-State? Okay, he's not been talked about a lot. Just kind of like Kansas coach Lance Leipold. In my opinion, they're not flashy enough for some people to want to talk about him. Okay, and just real quick on Kleiman maybe not wanting to leave Kansas State, I will say this, maybe he doesn't, but it's not like the Big 12 Conference is exactly on solid ground with Texas and Oklahoma leaving. Okay, adding UCF, Houston, BYU, and Cincinnati, that's awesome, but it ain't the same as having Texas and Oklahoma, let's be honest. But here's the deal, going back to the whole flashy thing, I think that's why they haven't been brought up as much, and maybe he doesn't want to leave K-State. Okay, I don't care about flashy. I really don't. Okay, I don't care if it's Dion, I don't care if it's Rule, I don't care if it's Kleiman, Chadwell, as long as they do two things. I only care about two things for our head coach here at the University of Nebraska, the next guy who comes in. Win football games and represent this university in this great state with class. That is all I care about. Like, smash that like button if you agree with me. Win football games and represent this great university and state with class. If you agree with me, let the people know. Now comment. Comment below and let me know. Okay. Would Matt Rule be a good hire here at the University of Nebraska? Would Chris Kleiman, Kleiman be a good hire here at the University of Nebraska? Would anybody I just mentioned, I want five or six different names. Is there anybody who sticks out to you that you would like to see hired here at the University of Nebraska? All right, until next time, Husker Nation, stomp a mud hole, walk it dry, and that's the bottom line because the Character Chronicles said so. Got to show off the shirt. Go big red and always remember, throw the bugs. This show is brought to you by X Cancer. Join the fight at xcancerstore.com and support your loved ones, your neighbors, and cancer fighters all over the world and help them gain access to revolutionary treatments. xcancerstore.com has a wide variety of t-shirts and merchandise supporting a wide variety of cancer battles so you can show off the colors that matter. Proceeds from each purchase not only help those at home, but also cancer fighters in Tanzania, Africa, Check them out at xcancerstore.com.